Walsh Pine Financial Group, where we work together so you succeed. Hey, you found us here on Facebook. Maybe you found us on YouTube. Please help us out. We're trying to build a channel so we can help more real estate investors just like you. Help us out by hitting like, hit subscribe, share with a friend, and maybe leave us some comments below. Uh, topic today is national debt. I know we're coming up on an election here very soon. And so I saw this graph today and I thought, man, that's kind of a scary looking graph. So I wanted to go over this real quickly with you. So what this graph is showing you is that the federal debt is reaching 100% of GDP. So gross domestic product. That's how you measure the US or any rather economy. So if you're at 100% of GDP, that means your total debt is equal to the GDP, which is very scary. Now, th does that necessarily mean something terrible is going to happen when we hit 100%? No, not necessarily, but you could see it's a pretty scary trend. Um, we're actually expected to hit 100 in the next two years, probably sooner. The last time, according to this graph, and what I read, the last time we were at this level of national debt as it relates to GDP was back in 1946. Now, if you know anything about history, mid-40s, we're trying to pay for a uh, world war. So that is a good explanation, pouring all of that money into the economy to, to defeat the enemy and win the world war, right? But now what is causing this? It's really not that easy to explain. Um, obviously a pretty big ramp up during COVID, uh, but the spending is continues, was and continues to be out of control. Um, actually, it's so out of control that do you know that the interest on the debt, the US debt has now surpassed uh, the military spending? So it's actually pretty pretty scary. So my question to you is, will this influence your decision on who to vote for? Um, I don't want to make this political. I'm not going to make this political. It sh probably should not impact your decision on who to vote for. There's other things you could worry about. Um, but as far as economic plan with both candidates, um, they both suck, rather, because they're both are going to increase the national debt. Harris is going to increase the national debt because she has some pretty big spending bills and really no way to pay for it. So she hasn't really explained how she's going to pay for it. So taxes probably remain the same close with increased spending that will increase debt. Trump, on the other hand, might even be worse. Um, he's not going to necessarily throw a bunch of money at spending, um, but he's not going to reduce spending either. But he is trying to significantly reduce taxes. So lower revenue and keep your expenses the same. That's also a recipe for disaster. So I think in either case, we're going to see the national debt surpass GDP. Um, so what does that mean to you as a real estate investor? Well, there's a couple of things to know here. When we have this much interest carry or interest uh, expense on the, the income statement the U that the U.S. government has, um, they are going to issue more debt to pay that. So sometimes I get asked as a hard money lender, hey, is, is hard money lending a Ponzi scheme? Uh, look, real estate is the most transparent asset there is. Hard money lending is not a Ponzi scheme because you could get a list of all of the assets that the hard money lender has, and then you can go verify those in the public record. So there's no smoke and mirrors here, although the U.S. government isn't doing smoke and mirrors either. They're running a Ponzi scheme and telling you they're doing that. Um, so the Ponzi scheme, if you don't, if you're not familiar, is when you use interest or profits to pay uh, investors. If you use uh, rather new investments to pay interest and profits, what you should be using is income to pay interest and profits. So the government issues debt, new debt, to pay interest on its old debt. That would be in the private world considered a Ponzi scheme. Um, so one, it's gonna increase uh, inflation because it's pumping money into the economy. Um, two, inflation increases interest rates, which three is gonna increase the debt carry because the interest rates does impact government debt, which is, means it's probably gonna have to issue more debt. So you can see this is this giant spiral. Um, and then eventually it's going to all come collapsing in and you're going to see some big, big pullback in some government spendings. What do I think is on the chopping block? Two things. Well, three, rather, if you consider Social Security. So you have Medicaid, Medicare. So your your government health help, Social Security, and then, of course, military. So I think those are the three that you're going to see the largest cuts in. A little scary. So if you're out there getting close to retirement or you're building towards that and you're counting on social security and Medicaid and Medicare, um, be careful. So what do I like to do to protect myself from this 
train that's coming. I don't know how long this is going to last, right? What do I do to protect myself from this? Well, that's why I love real estate and private lending. So if, if you're with me, if you enjoy real estate investing and private money lending and you want more information about that, or if there's anything I or anybody at Pine Financial Group can do to help you stay out of the way of that train, give us a call, shoot us an email, check out our website. You can get a hold of us at pinefinancialgroup.com. Let me know what you think. Is this scary for you? Leave me some comments below.